Hello children. In this video, we learn the lesson number four: floats, sinks, and mixers. Have you ever wondered why some things float and some things sink? Let's learn about floating and sinking today. Hmm, what causes some things to float and some to sink? Well, it's all about something we call density. Ah, <laughs> don't worry. Let me explain this. Everything around us is made up of small molecules. In some objects, tiny little objects called molecules are tightly packed together, and in others, they are loosely packed together. This is actually what density means. The objects that are tightly packed together have a higher density, and the more loosely packed objects aren't that dense. Whatever objects sink are more dense. See the stone? These marbles? And yes, these coins. They all sink in water because the molecules are jam-packed in these. Similarly, whatever objects float are less dense, like this rubber ball, this plastic bottle, um, and this lovely balloon. They all float in water because the molecules are loosely packed in these. Ah, some boats and ships are large and would seem very dense, but they still float. Can you show some objects that sink and some objects that float? Yay! Some sinking objects are coins, iron nails, glass, stone and marble, and other things. Some floating objects are bottles, paper clips, cork. Plastic balls and balloons. Just now you have learned which are the objects float on water and which are the objects sink in water. Now let us study what do you mean by solute, solvent, and solution. Ha ha! Today I am a magician and I will show you some magic tricks. Look at this water. I am going to perform my magic. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. Now this is magical water. It will vanish anything that I mix in it. See what happens when I add salt to it. The salt vanished. Now vanish this. <laughs> Can I tell you something? The salt has not vanished. It only got dissolved in water. When salt is mixed in water, its particles separate and go in between the particles of water. See? The same happens when I mix sugar in water. It dissolves. You are right. When the sugar has dissolved into the water, it forms a sugar solution. See, we take water. It is a solvent. So the medium in which another thing is mixed is called a solvent. Yes, you are right. Look at this green powder. It is the solute. The solute is added to the solvent. Then we mix it. Yes, you made a solution. In our sugar solution, sugar is the solute 
and water is the solvent. So, a solution is a mixture of solvent and solute. Absolutely right, Jimmy. You are a genius boy. Now let's try making another solution. This time I will try sand and water. Okay, let's try again. Mm, why is this not making a solution? Because not all solutes will mix with the solvent. When I make sand castles on the beach, the wave comes and the sand from my castle mixes with it. Yes, Jimmy, but that does not mean sand dissolves in water. The waves just wash it away. Solutes can be different. Some are water loving. They will mix in water very fast. But there are others who do not like water. They are water fearing. If the solute is water loving and it dissolves, then it is soluble. Like salt and sugar. But if the solute is water fearing and does not dissolve, then it is insoluble, like we just saw sand. My dear children, this is about the lesson floats, sinks and mixes. I hope you all understood the lesson.